Welcome back. Now we will see how to estimate the fatigue damage of a bituminous mixture using 4 point beam bending test followed by we will see a different post processing method to to determine the number of repetitions of a uh, number of repetitions to failures and we will also see a, a simulation of a fatigue damage using an indirect tensile strength test and how to, we will see how to use this uh, uh, laboratory simulated results in the mixed design. So a four point beam bending test, uh, we test a slender bituminous mixtures beam uh, as shown here in a figure. The beam of a size length 360 mm with 63 mm and uh, depth maybe 50 mm. So, this slender bituminous beam is subjected to a loading as shown here in this picture in a 4 point beam bending test. So, it is a beam bending test which is supported at the 4 points. So, one at the two extremes, two supports at two extremes and two other supports at the middle and the distance between the supports are equally spaced. If you call the distance between two support as A, so say equally spaced and 3 times A will be equal to distance between two N support L. So, in this 4 point beam bending test, we subject the sample to a repeated loading by uh, repeated loading and we apply load at the two inner supports. This is two inner supports. We apply load to two inner supports. Now, if first to subject the beam to a pure bending, we will pure bending only in a vertical movement. We do not restrict the rotations. So, it is uh, all the supports are free of translation and rotations. So, uh, this beam setup is subjected to a repeated sine wave. So, you apply a load so that you can control a deformation. The load is measured here and the deformation to measure the deformation deformation is measured at the center of the beam. So, we apply a load at the two supports, measure the load using a load actuator and we measure the deformation using a LVDT fixed at the center of the support. So, now here sinusoidal load means that we are subjecting the sample to a tension compression loading. So, you have a beam support here. And the beam is fixed at uh, 4 points. Beam is fixed at 4 points. We apply a load at this inner support, inner support. So, the load is again a repeated load in a sinusoidal pattern. So, what we do is apply a tension compression load by pulling and pushing the beams. Now, you can see this example for a sinusoidal load or two extreme positions. When you pull the beam down, you will have this down position, the bottom will be subjected to tension. So, tension at the bottom, so loading, pull the beam down, extreme position that will be subjected to tension, coming back to the neutral position here, tension will be 0. Now, you pull the beam up. So, when you pull the beam up, the bo bottom will be subjected to a compression. So, maximum compression when the beam is at the extreme position and uh, then bring back to 0 position, you will have a compression to be 0, uh, com uh, we will come to its, uh, to its original position. So, it can be a strain control or a stress control. If it is a strain control, the strain is controlled in the sinusoidal pattern by pulling and pushing the beam repeatedly. So, we are applying a repeated load in a sinusoidal pattern by pulling and pushing the beam from with respect to its neutral positions. So, in case of a haversine loading, we do not have this part of a loading, it is a half sine wave, the pattern is again it is a half sine wave. So, the beam is 
pulled down so, so this will be our extreme position so the bottom will be in tension and then uh, pushed back to its neutral positions so now if you see this extreme position uh, at the end of a completion of one cycle it is its uh, reference position which is a uh, beam horizontal position so on subjecting this uh, beam to a repeated uh, pull push you can see a crack initiation that is happening at the bottom uh, happening from the bottom of the bituminous beam so we are subjecting the bituminous beam to a repeated uh, tension compression loading so that the beam cracks from the bottom of a specimen tension compression loading or it can also be a compression loading so that the beam cracks from the bottom of the positions so this is what we are doing it in the four point beam bending test uh -huh. and now what is the result so before we look into the result let us see how to prepare the sample or a beam sample slender beam sample for this four point beam bending test so now uh, for conducting this uh, four point beam bending test we need a compacted sample of size we need a compacted sample of size 360 by 63 by 50 mm so this sample uh, has to be prepared in a very controlled environment so maximum aggregate gradations for preparation of a sample as per ASTM specifications is 19 mm. So, for a 50 mm, uh, 50 mm deep sample, the maximum aggregate size is 19 mm. So, nominal maximum aggregate size for a 50 mm sample is 19 mm. So, you, we have to provide a controlled setup because this fatigue life depends upon the aggregate gradations, amount of bitumen we add, air voids in a sample and all these volumetric properties of a bituminous mixtures. So, we need to prepare a bituminous mixtures in a very controlled way keeping an aggregate gradations constant for all types of uh, beam we cast. So, a sieving followed by a batching of sample then mixing. So, with this mixing again at a, at a predetermined mixing and compaction temperature. So, after mixing we, we do a aging short term to simulate the short term aging of a mixture. This short term aged sample or a mixture is, has to be compacted. Here it is uh, given as a press box compactor. It is not necessary that you have to stick to a press box compactor. It can be a, any uh, compactor which is available. But you need a beam size after slicing to be this size 360 by 63 by 50 mm. So now uh, with this press box sample, uh, this is a bigger sample, it has to be sliced to the required size. So now we use a, we use a sample cutter to slice the beam. And here while slicing the beam, we have to be careful about the dimensions. ASTM mentions 50 plus or minus 2 mm. So, the tolerance here provided is only 2 mm. So, 63 plus or minus 2 mm and again 360 plus or minus 3 mm. So, the tolerance range is only a 2 mm or a 3 mm which is very small. So, slicing plays a very critical role, role in obtaining the required beam samples. So, once you get the beam sample, wrap it up and keep it uh, so that there will not be any steric hardening of a sample and then use it for a testing. See, there are four standard test methods, standard uh, standards available uh, for conducting a four point beam bending test. So, if you see the four standard test, one is ASTM D7460 and this is 2010 standard but it has been withdrawn now. Another is ASTM D8237, it's a recent standard, 2018 standard. And the next is ASHTO T321, 2014. And the European standard, which is 12.697.24. So now let us compare this, uh, four point, this four standards across various test parameters. So one is loading waveform. So ASTM 
D7460 recommends the test to be conducted using a have a sine waveform. Other test you have a sinusoidal waveform. Now for uh, strain magnitude to be adapted. All these tests are to be conducted in a strain control test. All these four samples, four standards recommends to conduct the experiment in a strain control mode. So, strain control mode of testing. So, we control a sinusoidal pattern in the as per this three test, it does not have a sign pattern as per ASTM D 7460. You know what will happen when you apply a have a sign uh, deformation. So, over a period of time, the have a sign deformation will result in a sinusoidal stress or a sinusoidal load. The strain magnitude to be used is as per ASTM is in the range of 200 to 800 micro strain. Now, if you see a recent standard ASTM standard, so it is uh, 50 to 3000 micro strains. So, 50 to, uh, 50 to 150 micro strain, very small strain level is used in checking the endurance limit. That is at uh, how does the bituminous mixture behave uh, when you test it at very low temperature. So, from uh, 150 or a 200 micro strain to all the way to 800 micro strain, we use it for testing a normal bituminous mixture. At a very high strain, like from 1000 to 3000, 1000 to 3000 micro strain, this is recommended. To, uh, when you test a bridge tech material, a kind of thing. So, ASTM uh, recommends uh, normal to test a normal bituminous mixture, recommends a strain level in the range of 200 to 800 micro strain. ASHTO T321, again, the strain level recommended by ASHTO is 250 to 750 micro strain, and EN does not specify any strain limit. But if you see a test results of an EN, again the strain level varies all the way from 200 to 1000 micro strain. So, sample size same as mentioned before, a temperature 20 degrees Celsius as per ASTM, as to any temperature from minus 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, EN standard says from 0 to 20 degrees Celsius. So, this temperature uh, has to be attained over a period of time. So, if you want to test the bituminous mixtures at any specific temperature, you have to give a time for, so that the material reaches a thermal equilibrium. The time specified here for a or we call it as a conditioning time, so nearly 2 hours. So, if you test it at uh, low temperature, so, maybe you may have to give a higher time period. And this initial stiffness, uh, 50th cycle, 50th cycle and here it is 100th cycle. Let us hold for a while what we call it as an initial stiffness. I will explain you later what this 50th cycle is an initial stiffness. So, we test it at different frequency from 5 to 10 hertz frequency. Keep in mind that the fatigue life varies with the frequency. So, 5 to 25, 5 to 10 and here it is very high from 0 to 60 hertz. So, now you need to pick a strain value or a strain mag amplitude in such a way that the minimum number of load applications should be 10,000. So, based on this you restrict your strain application, strain amplitude, higher limit of a strain amplitude. So, before a failure to reach, you need to sub subject the sample to a minimum of 10,000 cycles. So, we have a comparison between a different standards. All these standards are a strain control test. Now, we need to recollect here that strain control test, we cannot see a crack pattern clearly. So, in that case, how do you visualize the crack? Now, if you read a ASTM D8237 code, so, beam sample after testing, once the beam is removed from a testing, you need to check for the crack pattern. So, fully expose the beam, fully expose the crack by bending the beam on the edge of a table. 
So, if you do that, there will be a uh, you can see the damage in the beam, and the damage has to be in the middle 100 mm of the beam. So, the position of a damage when you take a sample and bend it, you have to see a crack after testing should be in the middle 100 mm of the sample. If it occurs somewhere near the near the supports, you have four supports. If it occurs somewhere near the supports, so this may be due to a clamp uh, edge failures. So this we should not consider as a uh, consider it for the results. So we apply a repeated uh, displacement as shown here. You can see a sample waveform. So we apply a repeated displacement and we measure a load. The ASTM recommends to measure or collect at least 100 data point per cycle. So if you conduct a test at uh, 10 hertz frequency, 100 data points per 0.1 seconds. This is specific to 10 hertz frequency. So you collect a displacement and the load waveform. So if you look into the sample displacement and a load waveform, you can see both are a sinusoidal with a lag between the load and the displacement waveform. So now with this load and the displacement waveform, you identify or filter only the peak point. Peak point. So tension compression peak on a tension side should be equal to on a compression side. So you identify a peak point. So now this maximum tensile strain or a peak tensile stress and a peak tensile strain as a function of cycle on a repeated loading is shown in this figure. Now if you see this figure, this, uh, this figure corresponds to a maximum strain amplitude of 400 micro strain. Maximum strain amplitude of 400 micro strain. So you keep a strain amplitude constant. Now if you see this uh, stress amplitude, the stress amplitude decreases as you increase the loading cycles. So this decrease happens as the damage in the beam progresses. So you have a pattern of decrease. Let us discuss the pattern of decrease for a while. Before that, we will see how to calculate the flexural stiffness of a material. So it's a beam bending test. We will use a uh, conventional elastic uh, beam bending equation. Sigma is equal to m y by i, where m is a moment, bending moment. and y is a distance from a neutral axis to the extreme fiber of a beam. So if this is your neutral axis, this is y and i is moment of inertia. So with this m y by i, if you substitute for this loading conditions, if you substitute, you will get the for a peak stress p by 2 you will get sigma to be 3 p a by p h square. So this is again an equation, the same equation is used in all the standard for calculating the peak stress value. So now with the deflection equation of, uh, for this beam, where here you, we can calculate the modulus, this, where he, this equation here, in this delta is nothing but the peak deflection, deflection at the center. So now uh, with this E as elastic modulus, you can calculate the strain value to be, to be dependent on H, which is a height of a beam. A delta is deflection at the center, L is a length between uh, two supports, two end supports, A is a distance between two adjacent supports. So you, we calculate the strain value and the stress value. If you apply a peak load, 
if you calculate all this corresponding to the peak load, you will get a peak stress and a peak strain value. Now, the ratio of peak stress to peak strain is what we call it as a flexural beam stiffness. So, we calculate the flexural beam stiffness for all cycles of loading 